Good morning, everyone, and thanks again for joining us for the summary of Technoglass Inc. quarterly review. We are extremely excited to report re, uh, results for Q2 of 2021. It was a record year in every financial metric. Uh, revenues for the quarter, adjusted EBITDA, operating income, net income, EPS, and uh, cash flow from operations. So we're extremely thrilled with the development of the business and the prospects for the rest of the year. As you will see, we also increased guidance for 2021. So we got some tailwinds that are definitely helping out the business. From a backlog perspective, as we had discussed last time, commercial construction is once again picking up and, and rebounding quite nicely, especially in the segments in the geographical parts of the of, of the US where we are the strongest, which is the Southeast and, and Texas, which are seeing a significant amount of people moving moving down to these places. So we are seeing a lot of projects that were put on hold now getting back to market. Um, we reported 560 million all, almost of backlog, a quarter number, um, a quarterly number that was record. Two thirds of that um, backlog is related to residential construction, multifamily or single family that is already in production with, with firm orders. So we are not exposed to areas that are softer because of COVID, like lodging or even office space. Our main exposure continues to be into the residential area, which is clearly outperforming other commercial segments. It's important to note that the more that we get into single family residential, the more the backlog is underrepresented, right? Because you're not capturing all of the orders that we're expecting from single family residential where we don't have visibility yet. Because in the commercial front, you have 12 to 18 months. In the resid, this is more of a spot type business that we're not necessarily capturing in, in our backlog. So, the 559 million that we reported is clearly underrepresented as an indication for revenues for the next 12 to 18 months. Speaking of the residential side, that was by far the main contributor of growth. We grew Q2 revenues by 159% year over year and almost double what we did in Q1. And we continue to see a positive trend by what we saw in and early August. So we expect single family residential to be a segment that continues growing rapidly the, yes, the rest of the year and into the next year. We see this segment as having the largest upside because so far the growth that we have experienced is mainly in Florida through our legacy products, Elite and Prestige. As we discussed last time, we also introduced a new line for track homes and home builders called Multimax, which is gaining significant traction, starting to gain significant traction, but is not yet captured in the, in the invoicing. And also our initiative is to start expanding into the Gulf Coast and other parts of the Southeast that require impact resistant windows. We have not done that yet, and that's something to come that will generate significant upside to this part of the business. Right now, we are being the benefactors of uh, what's taking place with COVID. What I mean by that is there's significant labor constraints, there's wage inflation, there's raw materials inflation, there's transportation inflation. And believe it or not, Technoglass is not being fully impacted or nearly impacted by these factors. We're fully vertically integrated. We have a joint venture with Sangoban, which provides our glass, which is 50% of our raw material cost. We're hedged on the aluminum front, so we're not experiencing this volatility that a lot of other participants are, are seeing. Um, unemployment rate uh, in Colombia is 14%, and we have long tenure employees that get paid 20% above minimum wage. So we have very little turnover. And as a result, we're not having um, these constraints as it relates to labor. And finally, transportation costs remain kind of flattish with, with very little inflation because there, is, there continues to be this trade imbalance between the U.S. and Colombia. A lot of containers coming in full into the country 
that are otherwise going out, going back out to the U.S. empty. So we are able to control pricing of, of transportation, which, by the way, continues to be less than 5% of our revenues. So not something material. All in all, that is allowing us to maintain lead times at the same levels as we had pre-COVID, which are about six to eight weeks. If we were to compare that to some of our peers, we're looking at 15, 20 weeks. So that is allowing us to capture incremental business, new dealers, new distributors. We're talking to five or six of the of the main home builders in the country. So it's, it's definitely a good momentum. And it, it seems like a, a lot of different pieces moving in the right direction that is allowing us to continue gaining market share. From an adjusted EBITDA perspective, we're gaining uh, operating leverage on the business. Uh, gross margin of 40%, just gain 120 basis points year over year. Um, as GNA as a percentage of sales is much lower, so we're getting to an operating uh, margin north of 23%, which is a record for the company. And, and we expect this trend to continue. As, as we get more installation going forward, um, I think the mix of business will be less favorable from a gross margin perspective, but we're still expecting uh, gross margins to be in the, in the high 30s at least going forward, which is, which is very strong. And as we get into more and more of the residential business where we do not do installation, um, gross margins are going to be also favored by, by that dynamic. So finally, uh, to summarize all of these positive trends, we are changing the outlook for the year. We are now expecting revenues between 450 and 465 million, whereas in our previous race uh, last quarter, we were up to 435 million. So we moved up a full 15 million between the high end of last range to the new point of the low range of, of, of this new guidance. And from an EBITDA perspective, we moved from 115 to 125 last quarter. Now we're seeing 125 to 135 this quarter. So a significant growth year over year of 33% at the midpoint of that uh, new range. So with that, we wrap up and thank you again for participating. We'll hope to see you again in Q3 and have some, some good news as we have been able to report year to date. Goodbye.